Hello friends, welcome to a new series that I'm starting, which is called Help. It is basically going to put us in the shoes of what it's like to be a newer player in Oxygen Not Included, and kind of have a base that's failing and really struggling to keep going. And I'll show you how to stabilize that and kind of get you back on the right track, only because it can be kind of hard to tell what's going on. So, in this base, um, you'll notice that my air pressure is horrible because I have faked running out of uh, algae. I basically collected it all and deleted it, but I faked running out of algae. We have no other oxygen sources right now, and my duplicates are in bad shape. I also took way too many. This is more than it's actually possible, but I'm just pretending like we're later in the game. But this is way too many. I have a big need here, and uh, I'm going to honestly say that I've been in this situation before as a newer player. So let's run through three different solutions that I'm going to talk about to solve this type of problem. And also ways that you could put this into another run if you start it over or something like that. So let's get started on that. All right. Now, the first thing I want to talk about, I always want to start at the simplest possible point. This is like the easiest way to solve the problem and the easiest way to pick up if you're new to the game. So, uh, like I mentioned, the first thing that you want to do is really mine out the map. So, I have this running on very slow, by the way. So, duplicates are going to look like they're moving in slow motion, but that's just because uh, they might die if I don't hurry this up. But I don't want it to keep it paused and have nothing going on. Anyway, no one cares about that but me, but yeah, so what the point that I'm trying to uh, deliver in that slide there is this is a situation I see new players get into is they kind of expand out up until they start hitting the more advanced biomes. They don't feel very comfortable getting into those biomes because they don't really know what they're going to do yet. And I get it. Like I said, I'm making this series and I make a lot of my videos because I've been in those exact same situations and run through the exact same struggles. So uh, yeah, I know what it's like, but... The thing that I'm here to tell you, first of all, if you haven't done this already, is the map is huge. This is a gigantic map. And for the most part, especially on the starting asteroid, there's a lot of extra resources here that you can make use out of. And that's kind of the point, is to get out on the map and find what you can make use out of to help your duplicates survive. Why does this look so weird? I've never seen it that color before. Anyway, uh, so... What we're going to do first is I'm going to talk about that there's a bunch of extra algae here in the walls of these slime biomes. They can, these can look kind of intimidating. So really the first thing that you want to do if you're in this type of situation is just get in there and get more algae right away. Because that's the most accessible thing on the map. So just start putting in a bunch of dig commands. Whoa, probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Let me turn off my cheats so my duplicates actually have to do it. Uh, we cheated a little bit, but that's fine. So if our duplicates actually have to do it, let's just start digging it out like this. Put up some ladders going in between. Uh, man, I need to get out of the sandbox tools. We're just cheating left and right, aren't we? So just start digging. Uh, dig as much as you possibly can, and try to target algae if you can. So there's going to be big pockets in these slime biomes. Sometimes there's big pockets in these, uh, I don't know what they're called, but like hydrogen and chlorine biomes. Uh, they look like that. So if you can start off by getting all the algae that's on the map just kind of rounded up, that'll be a good start. So uh, what you also need to keep in mind is that if you're going to be surviving off algae for any longer, you want to make sure you actually have enough oxygen diffusers to push it. Uh, my duplicates are like desperately looking for places to breathe. But with these oxygen diffusers, if you take a look at how much they put out, it's 500 grams a second. And your duplicates consume roughly 100 per second, well, when they're actually consuming it. Let's find someone that's actually breathing. Well, they do take a little bit more than that. He might have a... Or they might have a perk or something like that to make them take less oxygen. But anyway, I think you get the point. Let's make sure that we add enough diffusers to keep all of our duplicates happy. So I'm going to add four more just to give us a little bit of a surplus. Because these aren't always going to have 100% uptime depending on what else you might be doing out on the map. The other thing too is when you're digging out, you might hit these things of slime, and the slime will just kind of passively produce oxygen. If you're in that state, um, that's fine. I usually will like to collect these and put them in a central area and clean the oxygen. If you don't have the research for that, you'll want to grab it because it's going to be important for the next part that we're going to talk about. But uh, why do I always forget where everything is? I am really bad at remembering this. Here we go. You want to grab these deodorizers. So I'm going to start that research in the meantime. And uh, we're going to let this go for just a little bit. I can probably speed it up now. But this should start to stabilize in just a little bit after we get everything powered and get everything running. 
the duplicate that's powering our entire colony. We're, <laughs> we are very reliant on Stinky right now. All right, so the other thing I'm going to talk about when you're getting out of the map too is you might be seeing these big pockets of polluted oxygen. Um, notice the pressure in here is huge. 14 kilograms per tile is way more than it would normally be. So if you're in the situation where you have absolutely no oxygen, beggars can't be choosers at this point. You got to just take whatever you can get. So I'm just going to take the oxygen by doing this and just digging straight in there and releasing it. Uh, there can be more pockets around that have polluted oxygen in it too, like right here. I could just dig this out, start getting polluted oxygen flowing in here. There's some here, so I could dig out there. There's a whole bunch of different places that I could do this and keep my duplicates busy, all with the goal of stabilizing my oxygen. So yeah, if we do something like that, we'll just kind of let it run for just a little bit. But that's the idea. Let me uh, fast forward just a little bit so you can see some progress being made. All right, it's been a couple cycles. Let's check out our base pressure. It's getting a little bit better, uh, pretty breathable in a lot of the areas. And this is really just from cracking open a couple of places and getting some more algae. You'll notice if we take a big picture view, I have barely made a dent in what is here. There is still a lot of slime, a lot of algae all tucked around in here. So point being that you really just need to get out on the map and start digging for things. Uh, when you start getting slime and when you have your research done that I just talked about, this deodorizer, let's set up something really quickly to clean all the oxygen that's going to come from the slime. Because you don't long term want to have everybody getting slime lung. It's not like your, dupl your duplicates are going to die from it or anything like that. Thankfully enough, they used to. That was horrible. Uh, but nowadays they'll just kind of be slower and be worse. Um, so that can be a little bit annoying, but... Yeah, so I'm just building a setup with deodorizers, and I'm just going to surround a bunch of bins that are requesting my slime and polluted dirt. So when my duplicates find those, they'll run those out here, and they will drop them in these bins. And then the polluted dirt and the slime, you can see these polluted bubbles coming off of here. They are producing polluted oxygen, so... If you do get the slime, you can just kind of run it to one central location. You can surround it with deodorizers, kind of something like this, and that'll constantly clean it out. Then for the areas that get really polluted, like if you crack something open like this, you can just start spreading those deodorizers in here as well to make that a little bit easier to work with. Uh, once again, this isn't going to kill your duplicates or anything, but it will make them a lot slower when it comes to uh, working. So that's definitely something you want to get on top of. So I'm going to do this, but the ultimate thing is that uh, if you take a look at this, we did profit some algae here, but we're still struggling pretty badly. This is not a long-term way to solve this problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the next level up in terms of uh, sustainability. Ultimately, you want to shoot for sustainability on everything that you're doing. So let's talk about that option. All right, and amidst all of our digging, uh, our base is looking all right, like we mentioned, but like I said, uh, the map is huge, and there's so much stuff to get out on here that's going to help you survive. One of which that can seem really annoying is all this, this polluted water. Uh, this is something that you could look at and be like, oh, that's so annoying, I really don't want to deal with this, it's gross. But this is actually one of the best things in the entire game. And the reason why is just like the slime that we were talking about, if you take a look at polluted water and just when it's sitting there, uh, it will just slowly give off oxygen. Uh, sometimes it's in too high pressure of a situation like that one was, that was a bad example. But right here, you can see bubbles coming off of here. So I am getting free oxygen from this polluted water just kind of sitting there. The problem is that these can be kind of isolated. I still will like to keep these open and probably put like uh, deodorizers around them or something kind of like in this situation, so I will just continuously get free oxygen from that. But if we need to speed up this process a little bit, sorry, let me hook up my power here really quickly at all these deodorizers. This power grid is not good, by the way. I'm just doing this the fast way. Um, there's a lot more information in my other videos about how to set up more sustainable and better, like, structured power grids in this, so just uh, wanted to put that notice out there. But uh, if I do find any pools like this, I will kind of want to put uh, deodorizers around it. My duplicates will just have to bring sand here every once in a while. And these will take the sand and use it up pretty slowly. So it's not a ton of work that your duplicates need to do to keep this up. But if they are in weird places, I don't want to constantly have to do this. If we want to centralize this in one place, 
let's do that. So let's make sure we have the research first. And if we don't, we'll get it really quickly. Nope. We're going to need a new research, which is going to be our liquid reservoirs, which is going to be right here. So we'll get our duplicates on that. But in the meantime, we'll start fleshing out the area that this is going to go in. For this many duplicates, you might be able to get away with one area here, but I don't know if I'm going to have to make more. We'll find out. But when you get them into this area, this is going to be something pretty similar to what we just did with the slime. So I'm just going to set up something like this, and then every spot where there could be one of those reservoirs. They're going to be two tiles wide, by the way. I'm just going to put a couple of uh, deodorizers like this. One up high and one down low, just to make sure it kind of cleans everything that comes out of there. We might also need to add more around here just in case, but this is an extremely cheap way to generate oxygen and it will get cleaned quickly enough by all the deodorizers that are surrounding it once we get there. So once we get the research for it, we'll go ahead and hook up the rest of this. And if it's too late, I'll just take another like uh, editing break here and come back in just a second. Yeah, Ruby's on it. Ada's on it. We'll get it here in just a minute. So let's fast forward just a bit. Okay, our research is done. That means that we can start putting our polluted water into these reservoirs. So let's go ahead and fill in the area that we built earlier with all these. I'm just going to build a bunch of reservoirs like this. And just for the sake of time, I'm going to take two of these polluted oxygen or polluted water pools at the same time. Um, you might not necessarily need to fill it up this fast, but since I have this many duplicates and trying to hurry it along, we might as well. So I'm just going to build a ladder down there. Oh. Someone was suffocating for a second. Just going to build a ladder down there and a uh, pump for water. Uh, this, or I guess liquid, whatever. This is going to pump it out. I will put half of it into one half of the tanks. And then I'm going to create another one that does the exact same thing over on the other side. Uh, I don't really want to go that far. Let's grab this one. Go ahead and build a liquid pump down here. Like that. I'm going to build the pump towards the bottom so that it will be able to take as much out by the pump as possible. If I put it up higher, it's eventually not going to be able to reach the water, so... Seems, uh, intuitive, but sometimes these are things when your whole base is on fire, you're not really thinking about it. So yeah, just going to connect them up like this. So the idea is... Well, I need to get them connect connected up to power, too. But basically, once the pumps turn on, and once they're all connected up, they will, uh, fill up these tanks with polluted water. Now that doesn't really do anything for us yet, and this is also something that you're going to want to make sure of, and that is that you don't have any bottle emptiers, and you're not trying to dump a bunch of polluted water in one place. So if you have any bottle emptiers, just make sure they are not accepting polluted water, because it's very key that those are not enabled for this part of the uh, build. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up this one to power two, and then we'll just fast forward again up until when these tanks are full. And that'll be the last part of the build. It's pretty simple, but yeah, we'll be there in just a minute. Okay, a couple more cycles later. We've got a pretty good amount in our liquid reservoirs. We don't necessarily need to wait until all of them are filled up. But all you have to do to get this running is deconstruct them. And again, make sure that you don't have anywhere that your duplicates are going to be taking this polluted water. You want the polluted water just to be sitting in the bottles that are going to come out of here and let them gas off. So you can already see it working behind Liam if it get out of the way. And now the game's gonna take a second. Okay, there we go. So these bottles of water that are here, uh, you just wanna let them sit there and they're just gonna continuously produce oxygen for you. The only thing your duplicates are gonna have to do is run sand here every once in a while, which if you have a good supplier duplicate, it won't be that big of a deal. You can also set up some uh, bins nearby to store sand just to make their trips a little bit shorter. So those are all options that you can do, but that's basically the solution at this point. Um, and this is to the point where you, like, algae is not a renewable source, so you will eventually run out. But, uh, this will be to the point where you can actually stop relying on your algae altogether if you can get enough gas off happening from the polluted water from around the map. Granted, I'm still gonna say that is not a renewable source. You will eventually run out of your natural polluted water, so there's still more that you can do to keep this up. One of which is there's a bunch of geysers that are out on the map, and one of them... Let me get into my uh, cheat menu here really quickly so we can spawn one. But one of them is going to be a uh, polluted water geyser. It's a really easy thing to work with. Where is it? What did they call it? Did they call it like dirty water or something? Yeah, filthy water. Is it naming? All right. Get this thing spawned. Basically, it's just going to look like this. It'll put out polluted water for you. 
and uh, all you have to do is just basically set it up like this. It's basically, it's like a pool that'll just refill itself all the time. So if you need polluted water and you find something like this, you could just hook that directly up to something like this and get oxygen for very, very cheap. You'll notice this is costing me almost no power. The only thing that my duplicates have to do, run sand here every once in a while. But yeah, pretty simple solution, but also can be very powerful, especially if you have something like this. This is not also the most common way to keep your oxygen flowing throughout the entire game. And even though it's done a pretty good job, you can see our oxygen pressure is now way better than at the start of this video. And only like eight cycles ago. Granted, I have more duplicates than I should right now, but point being is you can turn around these solutions pretty fast. Let's take a look at the most complicated way to do it, and I would also say the most sustainable way to do it. There's our polluted water vent erupting, by the way. <laughs> I'll need to clean this up. All right, uh, we'll get to that in just a sec. Okay, all you mad scientists, ready to do some very angry science? All right, let's go for it. So this one's going to be a little hand wavy. Um, there's going to be some parts of this where I'm going to in intentionally kind of skip over it, only because there's only so much we can cover at once. But uh, we're going to talk about our late game cooling setup here. So I'm just going to kind of clear some space so that we have a place to build. But the expectations for this is that you have some source of very reliable water. Um, one polluted water vent will produce enough to sustain quite a few duplicates. So as long as you're not going up to some absurdly high number, then you shouldn't necessarily need more than this. Cool Celeste Geysers, other things like that will work. If you have to rely on hot water, you can, but uh, it's ideal if you could find something else. But anyway, you need a reliable source of water for this. And we're going to need to clean this water and turn it into regular water. Um, the reason being is because I don't want to run on something like this the entire game. And as my base spreads out, I want something that's more automated to be able to send my oxygen to other places. Uh, so yeah, let's set up something like that. So first thing we need to do is we need to clean this water that's coming out of it. So we will need some refinement. Oh, I don't have this. Um, let's skip the part where I have to research it. We're just going to pretend. So there we go. <laughs> we got a water sieve, yay! All right. Uh, so water sieve is what you want, so I'm just going to set up a couple of them like that. We're going to need to run a pump out of our area where all of our polluted water is being created. If you have regular water, that's also fine, but the issue with it is that most regular water sources are very uh, hot. So I'm going to just go with this for the time being, because it's going to be a lot more common. So once it gets cleaned, it's just going to go down into a pool of water that I created down here. It doesn't, I'm not going to be too fancy with these builds. But yeah, so let's just say somewhere down in here where we have a holding tank of regular water. Um, ideally, you could also pump this into a bunch of reservoirs and have it come back out of the reservoirs. So let's just do something like that just for the sake of it too. Um, I'm not going to deal with all the piping right now, so you do have a couple of other options. Um, I'll just run it through this first, and then if the tanks are full, it'll just start going into the... Uh, um, pool. So once it's in there, I'm going to set up a pump just to make sure we can at least get something started because it might take a little bit for this to get started. I'll run my pipes through these tanks like that and then through the pipe also. I'm going to run through the pipe last so that ideally the contents of the tanks will be coming out uh, of this line. But this line is now going to be reserved for clean water. So I'm going to run my clean water up somewhere and we will handle the rest of this in just a bit. But the source of it is going to be from this clean water. We need a couple other things of research, so I'm just going to unlock those really fast. Um, we will need insulated tiles because we're going to be producing quite a bit of heat. We're going to need some automation, so I'm going to need one of those. I think one of these two. Let me check to see what else we're going to need. We're going to need some automation for Atmo sensors. We will, most importantly though... Where is this? I can never find anything. We will most importantly need our electrolyzer. I may already have it researched, but I really don't see it. Oh yeah, it's right here. I do already have it researched. All right, electrolyzers. That's definitely what we need. That's gonna be kind of the core of what we're gonna be doing here. So I'm gonna set up something like this. Um, and again, this is very hand wavy and very quick only because I can't cover everything all in one video. There will be other videos to go into more detail about what the stuff that I'm talking about here though. So, uh, let's say we have a floor that's made out of metal tiles, something like this. 
I'm going to turn off my uh, auto building so that this is a little bit more realistic. And uh, I'm going to build the rest of this out of some insulated tile. Maybe something like this. Your setup also doesn't necessarily need to be this wide. I'm just creating it big just so in case you have a lot of duplicates, you can expand it pretty easily as well. Then down here, um, I'm going to create some pool of cold water. Um, where you get that cold water or how you cool it is a topic for another video, like I mentioned. Um, but that's going to be what's going to keep this setup cold. So once they get all this stuff built, I'll just kind of use the sandbox tools to paint it in really quickly. Uh, but that's like the most practical uh, solution for this is some body of cool liquid. Uh, you could use, uh, you probably don't want to use polluted water because that will gas off over time, but yeah. So, I'm just going to make this a few levels tall, and the tallness is important. Let's just say up to about here. And the reason the tallness is important, this is kind of messy by the way, I'd make this a little bit better if I was in such a hurry, but you don't want to watch me just standing around just building stuff all day. Uh, so, we want the tallness because uh, what the electrolyzers will produce is two things. One, obviously oxygen, but the other one being hydrogen because it's basically going to split the water into its two different parts. Um, the hydrogen is something that is very useful for power, and the oxygen, obviously, we need to breathe. But the thing that we can get from a setup that's this large is we can naturally get the hydrogen and the oxygen to separate themselves so we won't have to filter that. Uh, so it would be a little bit cheaper way to do this. Uh, so also, we're going to need some way to pump this out somewhere. Maybe we want to pump around our base to different locations as it gets larger. Maybe we need to fill some Atmo suits or something like that. So you want to set up a handful of pumps. Something like this, uh, that are all going to kind of be... Uh, well, they're usually better if they're kind of paired up. I shouldn't be so messy about this. So let me just refine this a little bit. Let's do something like this. The exact numbers of each of these things is really dependent on how many duplicates you have, so I'm not going to be too super scientific about it. Um, but a setup that's basically two electrolyzers and four pumps can handle about 16 duplicates, so I'm kind of hand-waving with the math here a little bit. Then we're going to need one pump at the top. This pump at the top is going to feed the hydrogen that eventually gets up in there into a handful of generators that will help generate power for us. Let's uh, turn on our cheats again and get those researched. Oh, I didn't mean to do that, but I guess we have that now. Where is our hydrogen generators? Man, this is really exciting content, just watching me trying to find stuff. <laughs> uh, um, I don't have it already, right? Oh, I do. Okay, whatever. So I'm going to throw a few hydrogen generators down. Uh, I need floors first. Places that uh, I want to put things on are just going to be made out of metal tile. I'm being a little bit liberal about that, but um, normally would want to conserve that a little bit more if you can, but, you know, in a little bit of a hurry. So I'm going to throw down a handful of hydrogen generators. Uh, and again, this is not overly scientific the way I'm doing it. Um, if you have uh, time to calculate all this out, you definitely can, but this is definitely, like, enough. Uh, so... Bottom row, we have a whole bunch of pumps. Middle row, we have a bunch of electrolyzers. Top row, we have a bunch of hydrogen generators. Now comes the point of automation, because I'm going to want to automate all this to the point that I'm not spending energy on things that are not worth spending it on. So, automation here is going to be kind of quick. I'm going to take Atmo sensors for each one of these pumps, and I'm just going to hook it up like this. This could be more sophisticated uh, later on, but I'm just going to keep it simple and, and quick for now. If you really wanted to, you could also couple this with... Oh, I need to stop auto-building everything. You could also couple this with uh, like manual switches if you want to turn this stuff on and off. And then I'm going to leave a couple of doors here just so my duplicates can get in and out. I'll probably only want to put it on one side because I don't want them regularly walking through here. Like that. I'll put the... Uh, electrolyzers on a manual switch though, so do something like this. And the top one, I want to be on a gas element sensor. That gas element sensor, I want it to also pass through a filter gate, just to make sure that this is soaking in hydrogen for long enough to make sure that we're not pumping anything into these hydrogen generators other than hydrogen. So you don't want a packet of, of oxygen or something to float up there and turn this on and suck it in, so that's what we're doing there. For the hydrogen generators, you want to connect it up by heavy watt wire, so we'll do that. 
and I'm just going to need to rewire this a little bit just to get everything else out of the way. So connect these up like that. Just going to put some uh, bridges here just so we can get over the top with our heavy watt wire that's going to come up the middle. Like this. There we go. And then for all the stuff down here, you want to find a different way to power it. Uh, usually, the best thing to do with it is some refined metals. Um, I'm just going to skip that. We'll just hook it up to heavy watt wire right now. I probably wouldn't do this because this is a really a big waste of uh, heavy watt wire, but I'm not going to get too particular. I will get more particular in specific build videos about this kind of stuff. This is meant to just be kind of like, hey, this is the way you do it. And uh, if you want to figure it out for yourself, this is I'm just kinda trying to point you in the right direction. So, our gas element sensor, we want to be detecting for hydrogen. Our filter gate, we want to set this to a pretty good amount of time to make sure that this is definitively covered in hydrogen before this turns on. So, we'll wait for that to get up there. And uh, I did kind of gloss over this really quickly, but the automation wire just kind of connected into the respective ports that make sense. These gates tend to point in a certain direction, so you kind of want to just point at the direction it's going and then just connect the wires at the spots that are next to each other like that. Okay, and then the Atmos sensors. We probably want to make sure that we're above maybe like 500 grams, something like this, um, just to be sure that it is worth turning these on to pump the oxygen out. And for the actual oxygen itself, once it gets pumped out, it's going to go into some pipes, something like this. And I want to run the pipes through this water that's going to be down here that's going to be very cold so that it can cool my oxygen and it'll border this room to hopefully keep all this cool enough so that we won't need to spend cooling on anything else. But cooling is definitely its own battle. And with these, um, I'm just going to do this again. We're going to sneak out another piece of research. Which is just going to be these radiant gas pipes. You don't need a ton, but it's going to help encourage the uh, cooling on the stuff that's inside the pipes. So, radiant pipe. We'll go ahead and just kind of snake it through a little bit like that. It's probably plenty. Same with this one. Sure. And again, I'm being quick. I'm not being super neat about this, so apologies if this is bothering anybody with how messy this all is. There we go. Then we're just going to have these go out and kind of spray into our base. So, maybe something like this. And you can send them much further around in your base if you really want to, so... Just kind of have some exhaust around the base, something like this. All right, let me give my duplicates some time to build this, then we'll come back with the next part. Okay, duplicates have caught up. Let's keep this going. So, a uh, gas pipe from this top one I want to send down into the hydrogen generators, just so that when it sucks up some hydrogen, it can send it in there. And the bottom ones are going out to the places they're supposed to go. Oh, we need to make sure we're actually hooking all this stuff up to power so that we can actually get some continuous water running. Okay, and then we will finally need to fill all this up with some type of coolant. So I did mention you want to find a way to cool this water. I won't be talking about it here, but we'll just go ahead and fill this up really fast. So liquids, and I can just search this, water probably want to paint it and I don't want to like accidentally click and fill up the whole map there we go <laughs> all right yeah that's probably good okay leave like one tile just to alleviate some pressure there we go and this water you'll probably need to keep it relatively room temperature so 25 C is usually pretty good you could lower it a little bit if you wanted to now that we only need one more thing, we need to start sending our water into these electrolyzers. So I'm going to hook this up really quickly. This line again is going to be for our clean water. Once we get power all hooked up to it, this will basically get started, but I'm going to uh, also just put this door on automation as well, just so that... Oh, got to turn this off again. Just so that if I don't want my duplicates going in and out of here, then they will not do so. Did I turn this off? I don't know why. This is kind of buggy sometimes. Yeah, I don't I don't understand. Sometimes it just doesn't turn off, so apologies. It's not super realistic, but yeah, so... Oh, we need power up here too. Uh, there. So now we have everything set up. We are getting renewable water from this uh, polluted water vent. It's coming down here to be cleaned. It's going to go into our pool of clean water, which we're going to constantly maintain. 
That'll get pumped up these lines up to the electrolyzers. And as soon as we're ready, we can just turn this on. And there you go, that's our new source of oxygen. Um, lots of different ways you can set this up if you want to. I'm not gonna get overly complicated with it, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, let me fast forward just a little bit so you can see the whole thing in action running as it would in a normal game. Oh, I also need to set the settings of these Atmos sensors. There we go. So yeah, give me just a bit and I'll fast forward. Okay, here we go. Everything is all up and running. Uh, as you can see, we are getting lots of power off of the hydrogen that is being pumped up here. Um, it's only because we let it sit for long enough that the hydrogen built up to make sure that we are only pumping hydrogen through this one. And we are only pumping oxygen down through the bottom ones, just by the nature of how the gases will separate automatically if you give them enough room to do so. So yeah, we've got a lot of power being produced. All we're consuming basically is oxygen, and also there will be some extra power needed to cool this off in some way. So yeah, uh, this is basically the best solution that you can get uh, if you're a mad scientist and getting to those later parts of the game. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much all. Uh, let me know what you think. Hopefully this was informative. And uh, I'll be back with more videos in this style soon, uh, kind of talking about different problems that could come up in your base that kind of put your colony in a major or under major threat. So if you have any ideas, let me know. Uh, I'm definitely reading all the comments. So yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.